All right, welcome to the first uh, 181 lab this semester. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to read the safety measures on page one of the lab manual. There is a sign-in sheet making its way around. So when you've, si when you've read that, sign in. So to tell us that you've read the instructions. What we're going to do is go around the room, and each, one, uh, each table is going to come up with a safety situation and share with the group, and we'll discuss why it's important. And then if we miss anything, I'll go over the remaining safety items so that we all know where we stand for the rest of the semester, right? So let's start table one in front of me. Uh, one safety item that you learn about or know about from reading the information. Goggles. Goggles. All right, excellent. Goggles. So we require you wear goggles when you work in the lab room. Why do we need goggles? Protect your eyeballs, yes. You only have one pair or two eyeballs, and you're not going to grow any more. So you have to protect the eyeballs that you have. Now, we have goggles for everybody. I'm going to show you where they are in this bin. So goggles are important. Now, what's really important about goggles is that you wear them correctly. You'd think that would be pretty easy, right? But here's what I see all the time, all right? Right? This is protecting your hairline really well, but it's not protecting your eyeballs. And that's what they need to be protecting. So if I yell at you in the middle of an experiment and point your goggles, it's probably because you've got them up here. People do it all the time. It's easy to forget. But they need to be over your eyeballs to protect those, because those are pretty precious. Right? So goggles. If you have your own, you can use your own goggles too. OK, table number two. What's your safety thing? Long hair should be tied back. Long hair should be tied back. Excellent. Yes. Um, why? So, um, you know, that's doesn't touch any substance you're working with. Yes, that's actually a really good point. She said she went straight to the touching substances, right? Because uh, if you have long hair, it can fall forward and it can drip into whatever we're using. You want to protect yourself from your experiment, but also you want to expect protect your experiment from you. You don't want to be contaminating your stuff with your experiment with things that are coming off your head, for example. And also Bunsen burners. We do use open flame for some of our labs. And hair can trail off and it can burn. And it honestly, it doesn't smell very good. And we don't want to smell your burning hair. We also want you to be safe. So uh, that goes for hair. It also goes for floppy clothes. Like if you have long floppy sleeves, that kind of stuff, that's not a good thing to wear on lab day. Um, and similarly for other like clothes that you're attached to, we do use things that stain. They're called stains. <laughs> and they will stain your clothes if you get them on there. So um, don't wear things that you're particularly attached to. Uh, and keep your hair, long jewelry, and floppy sleeves out of the way. OK, good. Another safety thing from the back table. Uh, no no closed-toed shoes. Yes. So. Someone's putting their feet underneath the cubbies. I can't see. Why do you need to have closed-toed shoes? To protect your feet. To protect your feet? Right. What's the most likely thing going to happen? Sorry? What's it? So, OK, substances could fall. Yes, I guess you could spill something. Now, it could be something chemically dangerous. More likely, it's going to be something hot, so some, something you've heated up. But also, and the, one of the biggest things is glass, right? You spill something or a glass beaker falls off, it's going to shatter and there's going to be glass around. And so you don't want to stab your toes with shards of glass. We need to make sure we have closed toed shoes to protect from chemical spills and glass and that kind of thing stuff. If you forget your shoes, we have the shoes of shame. They are in a giant box outside there. They are very stylish. They're from Goodwill. I have all sizes and all colors. So uh, if you don't have closed toed shoes, you will be wearing those um, going forward. So just throw a pair of trainers or sneakers in the trunk of your car so you're prepared on lab day. Back table, something else. Uh, Excellent. Yes, please, if you have something go wrong, if you cut yourself or whatever, please let me know. We have to do incident stuff. We need to make sure that you're well taken care of. We need to follow the procedures for that. Uh, I need to know. So please let me know if something happens. Ditto for breakages, all right? If you break something, if you break a beaker, a thermometer, a cylinder, whatever, 
We're not going to get mad at you unless you were doing something really stupid like tossing it across the room. Right? Stuff is going to fall off, stuff's going to roll, stuff's going to break. We need to know for several reasons. One, we can replace it so that you have a complete set and so the students after you have a complete set. Uh, two, so that we can dispose of it correctly. That's the more important reason really because broken glass has to get put in the right place. It does not go in the regular trash. So those trash bags are really thin and glass will just poke right through and they will scratch and hurt our janitorial staff and that's not what they're here to deal with, all right? So if you break glass, we will clean it up properly. There is a dustpan and brush um, underneath the sink in the back corner. Most labs will have that. And there's also a glass waste box. So underneath the corner there, there's a big box and that's where all broken glass goes. It doesn't matter if it's a, a single microscope slide, a giant cylinder, we clean it up, it all goes in the broken glass container. It does not go in the regular trash. All right, so just let us know. Usually we'll hear a giant crash and everyone will be like, who broke something, <laughs> you know? But just let us know if that happens. All right, good. Something else. Um, follow directions explicitly by instructor. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the instructions that I give you, the instructions that are written on the board, the instructions in the lab manual, they're all there for a reason. These labs have been run before. We know where things tend to be problematic or there's step-by-step -step information to help you go along smoothly. So please make sure that you read ahead, that you've done your pre-lab, that you know what's coming and that you are using everything smartly and safely. Something else. Uh, keep open flames away from like flammable material. Yeah, be aware when we've got open flames, when we have the bunsens going, that you've got hair, you've got clothes, there's papers, don't pass your lab manual to your partner over top of the Bunsen burner, I've seen it done. Um, so be aware, cognizant of uh, when you have an open flame, absolutely. And also watch here, make sure it's out in the middle of your desk. All right, so we've been around once, there are a few more things we haven't touched on yet. Anybody else like to throw anything else out there? May or may not be in the lab manual? Yes. No food and drink. Yes, no food and drink. As we sit here with a, <laughs> these are empty. I just want to let you know. There's nothing in these. <laughs> these are for examples. But we don't have food and drink in the lab. So there's several reasons why that is a rule. So firstly, uh, obviously, you can contaminate your experiments with food and drink. So you can drop things. Secondly, um, you do not know, you don't want to be putting stuff near your mouth when your hands have been touching chemicals. So you just want to take that temptation completely away and not have food and drink uh, at your bench. Thirdly, you don't know if the person that's sitting at your bench that was in here before you was like the A student who, when they accidentally spilled their E. coli culture, cleaned it up perfectly and followed all the steps. Or if you're sitting at the bench of the kind of CD student, the kind of mushed it around with a paper towel and threw it away and didn't really know what to do. We don't know what happened in here before we came in here. You do not want your M&Ms laying out on the table. <laughs> so uh, that's another reason. It's just to be um, aware and safe with that. Um, another little story uh, that I, happened to me way back in grad school when I was doing like hundreds of experiments. I had these, I was breaking the rules, sitting there with my cup of tea because of course I'm in England, so I'm drinking my cup of tea and I have my solutions. And I have my solution in my tea and I'm pipetting. And I'm doing like uh, 120 on a big tray, filling like 120 things with a pipette. Drinking, pipetting, drinking, pipetting. And then I was in such a zone that I literally barely caught myself about to pipette from my tea and drink from my thing. You know, it's like one of those things where you have a brain fart and you put something in the microwave when you're meant to put it in the fridge. It can happen, right? You don't want to have your solution and your water bottle side by side because it can get confusing. <laughs> so here's what we do. And I understand that our lab runs from 11 to 1.40. It's like right over lunch. And we're all going to be getting hangry, me included. So if you need to have a snack, that's absolutely fine. But what you need to do is keep your water bottles and your snacks in the cubbies over here or in your backpack. And then you can go outside and have something to eat grab a drink, whatever you need to do, but do not bring them back to your bench. You leave your food and drink in your backpacks or stashed in the cubbies and, and use it outside. And that's fine. You can go out, you can go to the restroom, you can go eat, uh, 
you'll find there'll be breaks in the work that we do that you'll be able to go do that. What else? Anything else that we haven't talked about? Yes? Um, make sure that you know about the chemicals you're using to read the hazard label. Yeah, if you have any questions about stuff we're going to be touching or using, bring that to me. Uh, we have information about all the stuff and you just want to be informed. I have a few more items to cover. Um, firstly, we're kind of crowded in here, especially up the middle, and we do put stuff out on the back counter when we're all sharing it. And we'll be walking and moving around the room a lot. So I need backpacks to be underneath the bench or in the cubbies. So stash them away, because backpacks are the worst. Um, you, know, the hand, you can get your foot caught in the strap and you can go flying when you're carrying something hot or glass. So everything needs to be pushed away or in the cubby by the front door. And that will be the same every week. We also have some safety equipment. So uh, we have the goggles for your personal use. Then we also have fire extinguishers and fire blankets underneath the sink over there. And all labs will have those in a certain position, location. So with the dustpan and brush is also our fire stuff. We have fire exits to the outside there. If there's a raging inferno right there. You're going to go out that door. <laughs> and you're going to turn left. And that will take you uh, out. So there's two fire exits on either side. And then we also have our emergency shower, which I have never had to use, touch wood. <laughs> but it does work. We test it every semester. Um, so if anybody gets chemicals on them we need to wash off, we can use that. And there's also an eye wash station, which kind of is an automatic thing to clean if you get chemicals in your face. So we have those two items there, the fire items underneath the sink. Um, let's see, what else? I think. We pretty much covered the range. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to share or questions? Yes? Do we have to wear long pants or can we wear shorts? Um, I don't require long, uh, long pants in this lab. Well, we're in biology 181. We don't use anything generally more hazardous than an onion, maybe. But, so you'll be fine. Chemistry and other labs may have other rules.